Was geht, it's Wells. In today's video I want to quickly address some recent price developments for both Stockholm capsules and Riptide and Surfshop stickers. Let's start with stickers first. Here are the most expensive Surfshop stickers as of now. There are six that go for more than three euros at the time I'm recording this and probably the most ridiculous is the neon Opel Strafe which doubled in price in seven days. But most, if not all, of the others have gone up by about 40 to 80% in the past week or so as well, which represents the second significant spike in price for these since December. The Miami Tier 6 pushed 8 euros at one point and for now is at 7 euros, thus being the most expensive. With the current prices according to this sheet by Y, the stickers of both Riptide and Surfshop represent the best average return for stars as of now with 7 days to go until the expected end of Operation Riptide. It's now not long until it's actually worth buying a 100 star bundle and trying your luck with this collection, but if it does get there, the majority of people holding could simply cash out if the higher supply worry gets too large. This I know, the spikes have clearly been the result of people buying dozens of these stickers as investments. Whether the prices for some of these hold depends on their demand after the operation is over, but short term I personally would doubt that stickers like the Miami Tier 6, Opel Flick and Neon Opel Strafe hold their prices, including some others of course, if not all. Though these I would call the worst offenders as of now since the Miami Tier 6 is extremely expensive, while its demand has been slightly below average, which is still good, but likely will go down even further if this high price remains. The Opel Flick is the least demanded holo that is in its price range from this collection, if not the least demanded holo overall. The Neon Opel Strafe got ridiculous investing demand during this time and increased the most among holos from what I can tell from a relative perspective. I made a video on Operation Riptide investments recently and the largest part of the spikes happened after it so I'm hoping that the timing is just random and that people did not buy because of it. If you've seen it you will know that the result of my analysis was positive but that doesn't matter if these stickers are overpriced since then people will apply them so rarely that you will be looking at the same situation as with recoil golds and skill group patches in that they will just go down over the next few months, crash with the next operation and then it's a question mark from there. Lower prices early on, better natural demand and increased rarity in a year or two from now to help make this stand out in a surely much more crowded sticker field then is obviously preferred over what these people are doing which is simply annoying. But as always that's the nature of this scene that people can easily pump the prices by spending a few dozen bucks on a single item and if you are one of the guys that did this and you're watching all you would do if you continue buying the list stickers like this is allow people to buy star bundles and increase supply by a significant amount which means you would handicap your own profit potential. If you really can't stop yourself I would recommend doing this after February 20th but even then it would be a hype spike at best and not one that would last for long. Riptide stickers have seen more or less the same happen with this kill count holo and great wave holo doubling in price recently. The liquid fire holo has had a more timid reaction this time which is good since it likely has 5 plus x the supply of surf shop holos so it will need to retain even more demand after the operation is over which would be difficult if it is pumped similarly to something like the Miami tier 6 holo but not much else to add there. A different set of items that have performed really well in the past few days are Stockholm capsules. While for the legends, finalists and champions holders among us profits have been there but have been negligible at best right now. You're looking at 1 to 4 cent profit per capsule with these after tax which a month into these being discontinued is not telling regarding future potential quite yet. But for contenders and challengers capsules, you're looking at 21 and 35 cents or 105 and 175% profit before tax. Now there are big caveats here that I want you to keep in mind. First, if you are one of those people that can't really control themselves when they see a hype spike like this and want to invest immediately, my suggestion is to not invest into these capsules now if you didn't want to at 20 cents, with your sole argument being that they have recently gone up in price. If you do want to invest, I would wait it out and see if these rebound and settle in price somewhere lower. But for investing right now, there just are too many question marks surrounding supply for these capsules that investing now would not be a smart idea. And if you weren't around a month ago and are curious about these, then keep on watching the video and I will hopefully give you a few satisfying thoughts on them. And I don't want you to reach conclusions when I'm in the middle of my thoughts, reach it afterwards the same way I do when I analyze these items. Here's how these capsules have performed before their respective spikes. The contenders capsule has mostly been trending down after its first two spikes. Main reason? People were listing quite a lot of them. The man to unbox was and is quite high, but with a lot of people seemingly investing with a quick flip in mind, being scared off by the announcement of the Antwerp Major, and whatever else they had as reasons to sell, plus the fact that buy order walls weren't that large, made for an easy way to push the price down even if demand wasn't going down itself. So while it's not as bad as it looks, 
it's still obviously not great to see so many people creating so much supply just to at the end sell for minimal profit in what, to be cynical for a second, amounts to a waste of everyone's time pretty much. And if these capsules now continue to perform well until the next major, I kind of dread how even more people will probably invest into those regardless of the looks of the stickers. So I just want you to now keep in mind that if you maybe missed out on profits here and want to make up for that by overextending yourself with your Antwerp investments, don't. Don't chase the profits you've missed out on is what I would give you as advice here. It's pretty much what happened with Kerovice 2019 and Berlin and history suggests many CSGO players slash investors won't learn. At the end of the day, the logic is if people profit, more people want to join in, which might be a bad thing with capsules, but is a good thing with other items like cases, so it's pick your poison pretty much. But to bring it back, here is how the Challengers capsule has done. One thing I like here is how the graph mainly shows an uptrend over the past few weeks after that second Jesus-induced type spike. The same kind of seller resistance isn't apparent here, though what did happen is that 10,000 or so capsules were listed within two days to create a wall at 32 cents, and over the next week, all of this, and then some, was simply eaten through via pretty much mainly unboxing interest and I know because I've spent an unhealthy amount of time having challengers, contenders and legends on my second monitor whilst doing other stuff and constantly checking the recent activity. However, and this is shown via the sales volume here, once less than 18,000 capsules were left and only about 1,000 to 2,000 capsules at 32 cents, the FOMO reached overdrive status and hundreds of people bought up thousands of capsules to temporarily reduce listing quantity all the way down to 5.5k and the price all the way up to 47 euro cents before both rebounded again. But Psych, thousands were bought once more, creating the second hype spike for both in a matter of days. Legends saw something similar happen as well, but losing 100,000 of its listings over a couple weeks has not been enough to eat through those established walls quite yet. While unboxing demand is still present, it is now mixed in with higher investing interest, and the same goes for the other capsules as well as a result. I think the lack of pressure by sellers for challengers compared to the rest shows that the supply remaining is quite lower, however much lower it is in the end though. That more people for some reason were willing to sell the other capsules whilst holding on to challengers meanwhile I don't believe personally. That would be quite random. That said I would be surprised if there aren't at least one or two million more challengers left anyway so this doesn't mean supply is dangerously low. Not at all. Through sales volume numbers which are pretty distorted now thanks to the recent hype wave it's clear as well that challengers is the least demanded in absolute terms at 30,000 to 40,000 per week if we clear the recent investor sales from this total whilst contenders is about three to four times higher and legends at 400,000. In relative terms I'm sure challengers and contender situations look much better than legends and finalists is likely worse than contenders though whether it or legends is doing better is a guess as of now. That said, I want to sum up what happened and reiterate something I mentioned quite a few times in other videos. You don't want prices to go up too much, too fast, if it's mainly because of investing demand. 30 plus cents seemed like a fair price for challengers in my eyes, while 50 plus cents seems to be a jump too far at this time. If the price goes up like this too fast, it simply means fewer will be unboxed and more will be held by investors ready to panic sell them once the new items release. One good side effect of lower unboxing demand, however, is that as long as people continue to apply the stickers, their application rates may outpace the amount unboxed, allowing stickers to go down in supply as a result, hopefully go up in price, thus incentivize unboxing at the higher price point more. But I would still prefer a more logical price point and more unboxing demand. But to sum up, capsules were mainly bought by unboxers over the past month apart from two short hype spikes. Challengers had a 10 plus thousand wall eaten through over a week by unboxers mainly, until a thousand or so were left and FOMO investors bought up thousands as investments, pushing the price to 55 cents within a few days, even 70 cents at its highest point. Price rebounded, now more investors continue to buy, but unboxing demand still exists at a solid level, just not as good as before. When challengers spiked, people also invested into contenders and partly into legends, possibly also the two player autograph capsules, creating higher prices for contenders especially. Overall, the situation doesn't change much. Supply needs to be eaten through at a good enough pace over the next three months until the next stickers come out, so that the much reduced demand at that point in both capsules and stickers can be enough to help these continuously go up in price over time. Next sticker looks will also be a big factor in future potential still. And that's all I wanted to share with this video. If you have any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you would like to support the channel, you can do that with both a like on the video and also by checking out the affiliate links in the description where you can save money on both CSGO and Team Forest 2 skins. Thanks for watching, have a good one.